brother-in-law made his debut for Manchester United last night. Okay guys, I got some pretty bad news. <laughs> Keanu, it's fucking 8.30 in the morning. What the fuck are you doing? Why are you not at the office? You lazy son of a bitch. <laughs> you have to control your private life, your body, your mental health. So Really? What were you doing last night? Keep the bed. <laughs> I had a dinner with my family-in-law. Ooh, family-in-law, okay, and after? We went to, a, we were at like a comedy show. Okay. And then we went back home. And what did you do when you went back home? Why did you wake me up? <laughs> I was enjoying This is life. 18 plus content, guys. I was enjoying life and then sleep oh. and then I woke up today I was awake at 7 but sometimes you need to you can work 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 every day and I also like to work every day but sometimes you need to give the people around you a bit time even if it's only 20 30 minutes so now I'm today I'm at the office at 9 and then I'm work what do you do at the office that's an interesting question if they ever want to find a rental home in Amsterdam they should be coming to you Wireless agency. Yes. Hey, wireless agency. Follow them on Instagram, guys. Yes, yes, yes. The biggest real estate investors and renters <laughs> that Amsterdam has ever seen. Not investors yet, but soon, soon to be. Gaat er iemand? What? So I'm currently on my way to my aunt who lives in. Volendam, for the Dutchies they probably know the little town up in the north of the Netherlands. Um, she is my aunt, but I more so see her as my as my grandmother, um, as my grandma. Very very close with her. She's like the woman that like when we were younger, twice a week she came to babysit us, up until I was like I think 12 years old, and always like in between classes when you were at like uh, elementary school you know you had the opportunity to go home and then have lunch and then took a break for about an hour then you had to go back to school again and do some more classes and all of that and she used to make like <laughs> the, the 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 best lunch ever and all of my friends back then always wanted to to go home with me together with me to chill at my house at my place when she was there so she was always there on mondays and thursdays I believe yeah Mondays and Thursdays and then they always came with me and also my little brother his friends came with us and she she prepared lunch for all of us and, and it was it was such a lovely time the thing is in the car I usually get the best business ideas it's crazy always when I'm in the car and I'm just chilling with some music and my thoughts and just chilling and hanging out with myself or with a friend those are usually the times where like I think like I'm not a neurologist or anything like that but I think you go into like a different part of your brain more like the creative part so I have the opening of uh, Michael van der Poppe his brand new office uh, over at Amsterdam he invited me um, so that is pretty pretty nice I don't know a lot of people there but I think it will be um, worth it to go there for sure first of all to support Michael he has been supporting me a lot with podcast recordings video recordings and all of that and then uh, it will be good for my network as well. And then afterwards I'm going to... Uh, it was funny, right? I was just watching to the right. And there was this guy in the car. He was watching to his left and he was seeing that I was recording. And he was smiling at me and uh, and, uh, and signing with, with uh, his uh, thumb. So that's quite funny. I still think it's pretty awkward for me to film like this. Like in a car I'm pretty comfortable. But he was like looking at me. He's a taxi driver. <laughs> He's not driving away. And he was just signing like this. That's fun. Okay guys, just returned back home from having breakfast at my aunt, as I said. Lovely, lovely time just catching up with her and, and talking with her about life and, and the family and everything that has been going on in my life and in her life. You always realize what's truly important in life and I don't know. It feels like after afterwards, your, it sounds a bit weird maybe, but after the sun starts shining straight in my face while I'm saying this, that's no coincidence obviously. but. It feels like your heart is like filled with love after, after things like that. So that's uh, that's truly amazing. So really enjoyed that. In the meantime, our Ethereum loan, which I shared earlier this morning in the Discord community and stuff, um, is getting filled. First entry got filled while I was at my aunt. 
So guys, as we can see, first order got filled right over here on Ethereum. We have a beautiful, beautiful range over here in which I'm currently looking to build a long position inside of the discount area of the range where we had major liquidity resting beneath that low. We have a clean invalidation with Monday's low, which according to the statistics on the right, the dashboard once more, has a very high probability of about 80% of holding for the week. And the current weekly high, which is this high over here that we put in on Wednesday, has a low probability of holding of about 20%, which means that there's still a decent probability based on the weekly timing statistics and also the distance statistics that this low is going to hold and that there's still a decent probability that we are going to take out this high. While I'm waiting for the market to move in a direction during the London session, I've been writing up this thread right here on Twitter. As you can see, if I woke up tomorrow with a nine to five job and only a thousand dollars in my bank account, I think I would still be able to earn at least $10,000 a month with just my trading skills alone, only working two to four hours a day. Here's exactly how I would do it. And then I've been writing out this entire thread over here, also with an example of one of the students, of course, with every single step that I would be taking if I have to start from scratch again. point nine nine percent of the people don't know this um, and I won't exactly tell you guys what exactly happened but after I quit football I went to switch to full-time trading and full-time online entrepreneurship right um, because the last few months during my football career I started earning a lot more money with my trading and business compared to what I was earning with football okay so it was an easy switch and I made a video on this on my story uh, a few weeks ago and I will leave that link to that video in the description as well where I tell you guys exactly my story why I quit football and all of that but after I quit two months I think after something happened that basically made me lose it all okay like I said I think there's only a handful of people that, that know about this um, but I did lose almost all of it um, as you can see, it's, it's difficult for me to talk about it as well. Um, but as I said, I, I create these videos and this kind of content because I want to show you guys both the good and bad sides, right? Of entrepreneurship, trading, investing, but also of myself. And there, there were a few things that happened that made me lose a lot of money. Right now, I, I can see that it was definitely for the better, but I basically had to start almost all the way from scratch again, all right? So you can imagine the kind of impact that it had at that time on me. It was, it was a difficult and rough time, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, there's, there's just only two people actually that know uh, what exactly happened. Almost everything that I, that I had been building up at that time, I had, to, I had to lose it all basically, I had to spend it on something. Just because of a major setback, I'm not gonna give up and I'm going to pursue this. Right? And I'm going to give it my all. I literally worked seven days a week from eight in the morning, often until 11 at night. I know there's a lot of people that are having doubts whether they should be pursuing a trading or investing career, uh, maybe having second thoughts after deciding to pursue it and that kind of stuff. And all that I can tell you guys is that if you truly want something, truly, truly want something like I did at the time, because I truly knew that I wanted the freedom of doing whatever I want, whenever I want. And I truly knew that I didn't want to go back to a professional football career. And if you truly do, do know that you really, really want it, you sacrifice certain things for it. For example, at that time, I broke up with my girlfriend. I knew that I, I loved that girl a lot, but I knew that if I really wanted to make it, if I really wanted to accomplish the things that I wanted to accomplish and work on myself and work on my business and work on my trading. I had to do it all alone. Okay guys, it's 8.45 p.m. at night right now. I'm absolutely fucking exhausted. I had a very busy day with a lot of things that I had to take care of also in my personal life. I, I canceled for the dinner for the night actually because I was just too tired and, and not feeling like it um, to go to dinner tonight. So I just skipped up on that one. I'm currently actually watching Ajax 
like the club that I support, Netherlands play a pretty important game. I decided to just stay at home for the night, make some simple food. Um, I didn't even have time to lunch, so I basically ate what I usually eat as lunch for uh, for dinner tonight. Good night. Good morning, everyone. Bit of a late good morning. Recording wise, it's already 15 past 10, already put in a lot of work. Um, why am I starting so late with the recording for the day? Because of the fact that yesterday, last night, I was just so fucking tired that I didn't have the energy and, and time to figure out all of the recordings of yesterday and send them to Joran. So I had to do that today, so I had no recording card into my camera, so I can only start recording just now, as I also had to record a YouTube video obviously for today, which is going to be a recap on the Solana trade that we took earlier this week, as shown in the video as well. Complete recap, very much into detail, pretty nice YouTube video, if I can say so myself. Yesterday, Bitcoin saw a pretty significant dump over here, as you can see on the left, but we are seeing a pretty strong push towards the upside with a clean gain of this pivotal level over here, and we have plenty of liquidity resting higher. So I'm looking for a bit of a sweep of sales of liquidity, either uh, this sales of liquidity beneath that low that is being engineered by this fake break of structure, or a sweep of this low, where there's liquidity being engineered because of this fake break of structure, all right? that I did on ranges, I've been getting so many questions the past few months about how to determine a range, when is a range high probability and especially also how do we trade these ranges. So it was a stream for about an hour for the VIP members, honestly one of the best streams I ever did, especially education wise maybe the best stream I ever did actually. So I'll go to the gym and then afterwards we're going to put in some more work before Sam is going to arrive at my house and we are going to prepare a nice little dinner. So far a lovely start of the New York trading session which we got filled on both my Bitcoin long position over here that I shared earlier this morning in the community and also on the Ethereum long position that I shared earlier this morning in the community. When we go to the community over here we can see that earlier today I shared this Ethereum long position right and I also shared the Bitcoin long position right over here. So, so far this week, even though the pricing has been super, super choppy and I've seen many, many traders getting wrecked really, really hard, we are already up two and a half hours for the week with a beautiful Solana long trade that I recapped early this morning and I posted live on YouTube. I will leave the link to the trade recap in the description of today's video. Um, we got stop break even unfortunately yesterday on that Ethereum long, but the bias execution were very, very nice, unfortunately, price couldn't push through that resistance area and unfortunately stop us out of break even which was the right decision otherwise we would have hit stop loss really feeling like I'm, I'm getting back into the swing of things and I can already notice that the challenge and putting my head down again and focusing on the things that I have to focus on maybe it's too early to tell but it looks like trading wise it's also starting to pay off already so that, that is obviously a very positive and good feeling okay guys I got some pretty bad news um, <laughs> I was just recording myself while I was recording something and the camera was hanging up there on the window but I think I didn't attach it properly or something like that and it dropped really fucking hard and now the lens is not working anymore so I'm filming with my phone right now and I have to go to the store to hopefully get it fixed as soon as possible so that's quite a bit of a hiccup so until then I have to film with my phone every now and then but yeah, it's part of the game, um, part of technology. We always have these kind kinds of hiccups, uh, pretty annoying. But uh, I'm gonna go to the store now to try and get it fixed, hopefully today or otherwise over the weekend. So let's see. So I went to the store um, and they told me that the lens probably couldn't be fixed and that it wouldn't be under the warranty because they could see that I actually dropped the camera, so I told them, I was like, no, I didn't drop the camera. Maybe my, my best mate who I live with, Keanu, dropped the camera, I don't know, but I, I certainly didn't, I certainly didn't. I was like, he was like, I can definitely see that you dropped the camera because the lens isn't straight anymore. So I was like, all right, all right, all right. So he was like, yeah, it's definitely not going to be under the warranty, so I'm going to give you 
an address where they can maybe fix it for a few hundred dollars. So I was like, all right, pass me the address and I'll go there next week, which would have been pretty fucked up, not because of the money, but because of the fact that I couldn't be recording up until then. And it would definitely take up until a week for everything to, uh, to be fixed. So I got back into the car and I called Joran, the, the, the CMO and, and videographer. And I was like, hey, the lens isn't straight anymore, so they cannot fix it. I was like, can we not try and fix it ourselves? He was like, okay, maybe just give a bit of a bump against the lens and try what happens. But he, he wasn't really serious. I still did it. And for some reason it completely fixed the lens actually, um, <laughs> which is crazy. So we had a, had a bit of a laugh, but for now, at least the camera looks like it's still working. <laughs> So guys, it's Saturday morning, it's 11.30 in the morning, Keanu just left the house, so I, was, I thought, okay, now I can do some proper recordings and tell you guys what I will be up to for the rest of the day. So, so far I woke up pretty early because I didn't go out last night, it was Friday evening, and as you guys could see, I was just chilling at home with Keanu and Sam, and I watched some football, um, because Matthijs, my brother-in-law, made his debut for Manchester United last night. The tweet that I told you guys the other day that I was writing actually got crazy, crazy engagement on Twitter and actually went completely viral. As you can see, 212k views, almost a thousand bookmarks, almost a thousand likes as well. Now this shows that with content and, and, and all of that, right, it's quality over quantity in my opinion. One good tweet beat 200 regular tweets of mine in a single day. Because usually I get like a, a thousand, two thousand views a tweet and maybe 20 to 30 likes and, and, and one tweet blasts them all away and it was a really good quality tweet and this doesn't only show the power of quality over quantity but it also shows the power of team building because it wasn't my idea to write up on this tweet, right? It was actually one of the team members, the guy who develop, um, designs our thumbnails, things of the, the titles and the tags and the descriptions for all of the YouTube videos, the guy who picks out all of the, the, the clips for the reels out of the YouTube videos and Twitch live streams and all of that. Um, his, his, his name is Nicola, a guy from Belgium, 16 years old. Honestly, truly grateful for all of the work that he is doing. 16 years old, but very, very consistent in his work. So that way, 250 new members are not part of the Discord community. All right, guys, it's 7.30 at night. I returned back from the football game, um, which actually didn't go that well, but I got the workout in a 45 plus minutes, so that's nice. It was pretty hot as well. Um, Staya and Sam are about to arrive here, then Keanu and his girlfriend are about to arrive here as well. Then tonight, instead of going out for dinner, we're actually going to order some food. Um, which should arrive in about 30 minutes as well, some Mexican food. And we're going to have some food, have some drinks. I don't know yet if I am going to drink tonight, since I only can drink one more time during this challenge, which takes two more weeks after this week. Um, but the thing is that I am with a lot of people that I really enjoy being with, that I had a very good week of work, so I am doubting a little bit. I might be leaning a little bit more towards do having a drink tonight with my friends. I'm gonna wake up early, I think, put in some work, and then later during the day, probably going over to my parents uh, to, to have dinner there, just spend some time with them and, uh, and the family, dogs and all of that.